It is very awkward that mere ordinary people like John and myself secure ancestral halls for the summer. The large colonial mansion that I would say a haunted house, and yet it emanated a romantic aura. Still, I will probably declare that there is something queer about it. Else, why should it be so cheaply, and has stood so long unattended? My dear husband, John is a physician. He's practical in the extreme, and laughs at me, but one can expect that in marriage. You see, he's he doesn't believe I'm sick. My brother, also a physician, agreed with John. Both of them say I am forbidden to work until I'm well again. Personally, I disagree with their ideas. I believe work should do me good, but what is one to do? Though I do write in spite of them. I will alone talk about the house. The most beautiful house I've ever seen. It is a luxurious behemoth located not more than three miles from the village. In the garden lies ruins of greenhouses because of legal trouble with the previous owners. And the place has been empty for years. I don't like the room one bit. I wanted downstairs and on the plaza, but John would not hear of it. So we took the nursery at the top of the house. It is a big, airy room. The whole floor nearly, with windows that look all ways and air and sunshine galore. It was a nursery first, then a playroom and gymnasium, I should judge, for the windows are barred for little children, and there are rings in the walls. The paper, on the other hand, the colors repel and almost revolting, a smoldering, unclean yellow. It is a dull yet weird orange in some places. No wonder the children created it. Each, I should myself, if I had to live in this room long. There comes John, and I must put this away. He hates me to have me write a word. We have been here two weeks, and I haven't felt like writing before since the first day. I'm sitting by the window now up in this atrocious nursery, and there's nothing to hinder my writing as much as I please, save lack of strength. John is away all day with his serious cases. I'm glad that my case is not serious. John does not know how, how I suffer. He knows there is no reason to suffer, and that suffices him. I meant to help John, but I've become a burden already. Nobody would believe an effort it is to do what little I am able to dress and entertain, draw things. It is fortunate Mary is good with the baby, such a dear baby. And yet, I cannot be with him. It makes me so nervous. John laughs at me so about the wallpaper we meant to replace in the room. You know the place is doing you good, he said. And really, dear, I didn't care to renovate the house just for a three-month rental. I suggested moving downstairs. And he took me in his arms and called me a blessed little goose. I'm really getting fond of the big room, but that horrid paper. Out of the window, I see the beautiful garden and often fancy people walking to and fro in numerous paths and arbors. But John says to give away my fancies. With my imaginative power and a habit of story making, a nervous weakness like mine is sure to lead to all kinds of excited fancies. I think sometimes, if I were only well enough to write a little, I would relieve the press of ideas and resting. But I find I get pretty tired when I try. It is so discouraging not to have any advice and companionship about my work. I wish I could get faster, but I must not think about that. This depicts to me as if it knew what a vicious influence it had. There's a recurrent spot where the pattern laws like a broken neck and two bulbous eyes that stare at you upside down. 
They get positively angry with the impertinence of it and their everlastingness. Up and down and sideways they crawl, and those absurd unblinking eyes everywhere. If there's one place where the breaths didn't match, and the eyes go all up and down the line, one a little higher than the other. I never saw so much expression than I ever think before, and we all know how much expression they have. I used to lie awake as a child and get more entertainment and tear off with blank walls and plain furniture than most children could find in a toy store. The furniture in this room is no worse than in Harmonious. I suppose when this was used as a playroom, they had to take the nursery things out, and no wonder I never saw such ravages as the children have made here. The wallpaper, as I said before, is torn off in spots, and it's closer than a brother. They must have had perseverance as well as hatred, and the floor is splintered here and there in this great heavy bed which is all we found in the room. Looks as if it had through wars, but I don't mind it a bit, only the paper. There comes John's sister, such a nice lady. This wallpaper has a kind of sub pattern in a different shade. A particularly irritating one, for you can only see it in certain lights and not clearly then. For in places where it isn't faded, and where the sun is just so, I can see a strange, provoking, formless figure that seems to skulk about behind that silly and conspicuous design. Well, the fourth of July is over. The people are all gone, and I'm tired out. John thought some company would do me good. So we had the mother and Nellie and the children down for a week. Of course, I didn't do a thing. Jenny sees to everything now. But I'm tired all the same. John says, if I don't get well soon, he's going to send me to where Mitchell in the fall. But I don't want to go there at all. I had a friend who was in his hands once, and sa she says he is just like John and my brother, only more. Besides, it is an undertaking to go so far. I'm getting really fond of the room in spite of the wallpaper. Perhaps because of the wallpaper. It dwells in my mind so. I lie here on this great immovable bed, nailed down I believe, and follow that pattern about by the hour. It is as good as gymnastics, I assure you. I start will say at the bottom, down the corner over there where it has not been touched. And I determined for the thousandth time that I will follow the pointless pattern to some sort of conclusion. This pattern is unnatural and repeats itself, horizontally and vertically, uh, pulsating here and there. It tires me so to follow it. I'll get a nap, I guess. I don't know why I should write this. I don't want to. I don't feel able. And I knew John would think it absurd. But I must say what I feel and think in some way a relief. But the effort is greater than the relief. Half the time now I am awfully lazy and I sleep most of the time. But, that, but John does not want me to be weaker and makes me take tonics and such. Dear John, he loves me so and is concerned for my health. There is one comfort. The baby is well and happy, and does not have to occupy this nursery with a horrid wallpaper. Thankfully, the baby does not have to live in this room, gazing upon this erratic pattern that looks as if it is a woman stooping down and creeping about behind the pattern. I don't like it a bit. I wonder, I begin to think, I wish I would take away from here. It is so difficult to talk to John about my case because he is so wise and because he loves me so. But I tried it last night. John fell asleep and I hated to waken him. So I kept still and watched the moonlight and the undulating wallpaper till I felt creepy. Creepy as the poor soul in the wallpaper who constantly shakes the paper at night. Maybe I can let her out when we renovate the room even though John says we'll be out of here in three weeks. I just can't stand it. On a pattern like this, by daylight there is a lack of sequence, a defiance of law that is constant irritating. 
to a normal mind. The color is hideous enough and unreliable enough, infuriating enough, but the pattern is torturing. Just as you think you've figured it out, it changes. The pattern slaps you in the face, knocks you down, and travels you like a bad dream. The outside pattern is a florid arabesque, reminding one of a fungus. If you can imagine a toadstool wings an interminable string of toadstools budding and sprouting in endless convulsions, why, that is something like it. That is sometimes. The paper is ever changing, especially in light, lamp candlelight, and worst of all, moonlight. It becomes bars. The outside pattern, I mean, and the woman behind it is as plain as can be. For some time, I did not realize what showed behind the dim silk pattern, but now I'm quite sure it is a woman. I lie down ever so much now, but never sleep. No, no, I just lie there starting that infuriating pattern. Now I'm fairly used to the wallpaper, all except for that smell, a yellow smell. I have discovered something at last through watching so much at night when it changes so. I finally found out the font pattern does move, and no wonder the one behind it shakes it. Sometimes I think there is one woman behind it, other times I think there are many, but the woman's crawling shakes it all over. In bright spot she says stay still, and in shady spot she shakes the bars hard. She's trying to climb through, but no one can climb through the pattern. It strangles so, I think that is why it has so many heads. They get through, and then the pattern strangles them and turns them upside down and makes their eyes white. If those heads were coated or taken off, it would not be half so bad. I think that woman gets out in the daytime. I've seen her. I can see her out my window. I know it is the same woman because she is always creeping and most women do not creep in the daylight. I see her in the long shaded lane creeping up and down. And I see her in those dark grape arbors creeping all around the garden. I see her on that long round under the tree creeping all along and when a carriage comes she hides under a blackberry vine. I don't blame her a bit. It must be very humiliating being caught creeping in the daylight. I always lock the door when I creep in the daylight because I can't do it at night. John would suspect something. John is so queer now and I wish he would take another room. Besides, I don't want anyone to get that woman out but myself. I often wonder if I could see her creeping out all the windows at once, but fast as I can turn, I only see her out of one. She may be able to creep faster than I can turn. I've watched her away up country, creeping as fast as a cloud in a high wind. If only that top pattern could be gotten off from the under one. I mean, to try little by little. I found out another little thing that I won't tell because it does not do to trust people too much. I only have two days to finish taking the wallpaper off and I think John's beginning to notice. I don't like the look in his eyes. I heard him ask Jenny a lot of personal questions about me and she had a very good report to give. She said I slept good in the daytime. He knows I did not sleep well at night. He asked me all sorts of questions and pretended to be very loving and kind. If I, uh, as if I, uh, as if I could see you right through him. Hurrah! This is the last day, but it is enough. John had to stay in town overnight and won't be out till evening. Jenny wants to sleep with me, the sly thing, but I told her sh I should rest better all alone. That was clever, for I really wasn't alone. As soon as the moonlight hit that poor thing, it began to crawl and shake the pattern. I ran to help her. I pulled. And she shook, I shook, and she pulled, and by morning we had peeled off yards of the paper off. And when the sun came out, that awful pattern began to laugh at me. I declared I would finish it today. Jenny looked at the wall in pure amazement, but I told her I did it out of pure spite, the vicious thing. She laughed and said she wouldn't mind doing it herself, but I must have got tired how she betrayed herself that time. But I am here and no person touches that paper but me. 
She tried to get me out of the room, but I said it was so quiet and empty and clean, I, and I believe I would lay down again and sleep all that I could. Do not wake me, I said, not even for dinner. She is gone. Servants are gone. Everything is gone except for the great bedstead that is nailed down. We shall sleep downstairs to try and take the boat home tomorrow. I quite enjoy the room now at bear again. How those children did tear about here. This bedstead is fairly gnawed. But I must get to work. I have locked the door and thrown the key down into the front path. I don't want to go out and I don't want to have anybody come in until John comes. I want to astonish him. I've got a robe up here that not even Jenny found. If that woman does get tired and try to get away, I can tie her. But I forgot I could not reach for without anything to stand on. This bed will not move. I tried to lift and pull until I was lame. And then I got so hungry, I bit off a piece of the corner. It hurt my teeth. Ouch. Then I had a paper, all the paper I could reach, standing on the floor. It sticks horribly. and the pattern enjoys it. All those struggled heads and bulbous eyes and while the wildling fungus grows to shriek with derision, I get angry enough to do something desperate to jump out of the window with the admirable exercise. But the bars are too strong even to try. Besides, I wouldn't do it. Of course not. I know well enough that a step like this is improper and might be dis misconstrued. I don't like the look out of the windows even. There are so many of those creeping women and they creep so fast. I wonder if they all came out of the wallpaper as I did, but I am securely fastened now by my rope. You don't get me out of out in the road there. I just have to get back behind the pattern when it comes night, and it is hard. It is so pleasant to be out in this room and creep around as I please. I don't want to go outside, I want you and if Jenny asked me to. For outside you creep on the ground and everything is green instead of yellow. But there I can creep smoothly on the floor and my shoulder fits that along the smooth around the wall. So I cannot lose my way. <laughs> Why, there's John at the door. It's no use, young man. You can't open it. <laughs> oh, he does call and pound. <laughs> now he's crying for an axe. It would be a shame to break down that beautiful door. John, dear, said I in the gentlest voice, the key is down by the front step under the plantain leaf. That silenced him for a few moments. Then he said very quietly indeed, Open the door, my darling. I can't, I said. I said again several times, very gently and slowly. He eventually got the key and came in. What is the matter? he cried. For God's sake, what are you doing? I kept on creeping just the same, but I looked at him over my shoulder. I've got out at last, said I, instead of you and Jane. And I've pulled off most of the paper so that you can't put me back. And why should that man have fainted? But he did. And right across the path by my wall, so that I had to creep over him every time. Remember when you ran away and I got on my knees and begged you not to leave because I go berserk? Well, you left me anyhow and then the days got worse and worse and now you see I've gone completely out of my mind. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> they're coming to take me away, haha. -ha. They're coming to take me away, ho ho, hee hee, haha. -ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful. <laughs> it's a walker dog. Sorry. Go. It's so difficult. Go. It is so difficult to talk with John about my case. Because he is so wise and because he loves me so. But I tried it last night. John fell asleep and I hated to wake him. So I kept still and watched the moonlight on their under underwater wallpaper. I felt creepy. Wait, hold on. What are you doing? Don't be coming. Go. It is so difficult. I can't do it! Okay. I can't be serious because he's laying there and he's gonna laugh. I don't know if I can tell John or Derek. I don't know what you're saying. They don't matter. I mean, they're not gonna hear it. You didn't say John. Yeah, I know. just be like Bob Dole. Okay, go, 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 go. Thank you. It is so difficult. And then I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats And they're coming to take me away <laughs> To the happy home with trees and flowers and chirping birds And basket weavers who sit and smile and twiddle their thumbs and toes And they're coming to 